This is off planet radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. Randy Moggins here, and um, we're in September. And there's been a lot of gaps between shows and presentations lately. Some of that's just a function of my schedule and a function of my energies and the time that we're in. The fact that I'm writing, and we kind of are now entering another, it's kind of a slide zone. As we're going to September and October, the energies are starting to shift again. And it's important that we kind of get a sense, a pulse on where we're going. Most of you know, we entered into the eye of the needle in 2019. We've projected that we will be in the eye of the needle until 2024. And that what goes on in the interim between all of this has to do with how each of us operates in our own consciousness. And the collective will go where the collective goes and in one sense what is occurring right now as a result of the operation we'll call it that because we can't use proper words anymore is the world is splitting and we will all get to decide our future where we dwell how we inhabit this world in terms of our consciousness our spirit our bodies. And to that end, um, I'm pleased to introduce you to somebody that I've gotten to know over well, probably the last six to eight months. Um, again, kind of part of what I like to do is I like to find people who have unique gifts and talents that they bring to the table and allow you all to share in what I get to learn as well. And so um, my guest today comes from Charlotte, North Carolina. She is an evolutionary astrologer, yoga teacher, energy worker. She started out in academia chasing a PhD in health psychology and then delving into neurological and psychological motivations behind human emotions and behaviors and found astrology during her first year of her undergraduate degree and fell in love. Ingesting as much of the information as possible, she enjoys assisting people with embodiment of their truest essence in their walk and helping them pattern themselves to the matrix away from, pattern themselves away from the matrix veil of illusions. I suck reading stuff. Uh, let's just bring her on. Meredith Swain, welcome to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV, my, my dear friend. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> For having me yeah it's just one of those days for sure yeah it is <laughs> i'm happy to be here so tell me a little bit about how you've come to work with astrology what you because you kind of have your own unique style yeah um okay so i started out i found astrology when i was at a yoga studio working in their child care department and you know i had a coworker like mention to me like what is your moon sign and i was like what do you mean what is my moon sign i think i was like 19 or 20 or something and um from there it was kind of off to the races um i was pretty disillusioned already with academia when i discovered astrology it had not been but a few years in college and i was kind of like hmm this seems and feels very incomplete mm -hmm. um and of course i was also very incomplete and kind of i think that's why like on some level, when you go to school for psychology, you have to like know that you're a little bit fucked up, like on, on some level. <laughs> yeah, it's always so, been said, and I know, because I tended to date girls that were psychology students. <laughs> in so it's true. <laughs> you know, and then it's because, and I'm drawn to psychology. I think mm -hmm. we're drawn to it because it's one modality for us to understand the human condition, which includes us. Yes. And it's the most dominant 
you know, way to understand yourself and to like reckon with yourself and your world around you. I mean, it's, it's pretty big in the, in the mainstream. And that's kind of what I was exposed to up until I started yoga. My parents are both very matrixy. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I was very disillusioned with academia. I found myself in more and more deeply immersed in yoga tradition, like, you know, going to yoga, like experiencing energetic anatomy, really experiencing it before, like I go learn about it, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and yeah, there was just a lot of like, it was a very important nexus point, I think for, for me in, in my life at that time, because it took me maybe like three or four years. And then I was like, helping people with their birth chart like for you know like 50 bucks at the coffee shop you know back in the day (laughs) um but I I I found a lot of resonance with it when I read about myself I think that's how every astrologer gets started and then you sort of notice how how it is sort of an imprint. I mean, like when you're born that very time, date and place, you kind of like receive in a way the energy of, I mean, planets are frequencies, everything is frequencies. So you're kind of like experiencing yeah. Yeah. the sky at that point because you are the sky. I mean, we talked a little bit about that before. Right. Um, yeah. That's kind of, well, what we, let's just clue them, clue them in <laughs> what we're talking about. As I yeah. said to you, You know, the tagline for the show since the beginning, 10 years ago, is the truth is out there. It's inside of you. It's slamming together the X files and some words from Jesus in the New Testament together, which in my world makes perfect sense. Jesus, you know, the X files. Why not? And there you have it. (laughs) And so, you know, there's this amalgam that occurs where um, and you say it so well in some of your writings. You know, astrology helps us understand what's above us in the sky, and yet it's also inside of us. Mm -hmm. We're mapping the inner worlds sort of from the outer worlds and vice versa. So, you know, it's not news to my, my listeners and probably not to yours either that we both kind of believe that we have the universe inside of us, that we are the universe, Mm -hmm. and that what we view externally is, and this has come out in some really recent stuff that I've put out, that what we see as the universe is really just a projection of the inner worlds. Mm-hmm. We inhabit. Now it gives it a whole different range of meanings in how we map this and how we map reality and our relationship to it. Absolutely. It's... um yeah, that's a very interesting thought. I, my mind just goes into this like meta, like mandala picture where like you zoom in on like a cell and Mm -hmm. there is like the whole entire solar system. And you also brought up something about the law of correspondence, right? The as Mm -hmm. above, so Mm -hmm. below, as within, so without, that's kind of like, I've just been beating that drum, like for the last few years, like, you know, we, are experiencing maybe like collectively like a bit of like it's all a dream anyway from my perspective but it's like um Mm -hmm. a little bit of a night like it's like turning in it's like like it's going off the rails a little bit (laughs) and i think that um i'm excited to talk with you about 2022 because i think that it's kind of a wake-up call it's like the first thing and a great time to be aligned like truly aligned like with who you really are and like you know because i think that's like the only reliable compass <laughs> so <laughs> <this> point in time <laughs> yeah in the in the clockworks that i've mapped out going from 2019 i started the eye of the needle series in 2019 largely because i was sort of compelled at that time to break with what I was doing. I I was getting tired of, I love doing interviews. I love having conversations, Mm -hmm. but I also sensed there was something else that wanted to come out. So in a shot in the dark, 
is that <clears throat> I had been impelled by that great American eclipse in 2017, which I had talked about endlessly, probably to the exhaustion of some people, <laughs> my OCD patterns. <laughs> but 2019 hit, and it was like, something's happening, something's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And we hit that, um, that conjunction on the solstice, the Capricorn, was it Capricorn-Saturn conjunction? The Saturn-Pluto conjunction? Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a, I still uh, feel the reverberations of that. Like that's like a 33 year cycle. Exactly. According exactly. to quote That's a really time. long cycle. And it's a grand cycle. And this is the stuff where like somebody like you, if I could sit down, we would map all this out and graphs and charts and stuff because that's my that's my wonky side but i see it <clears throat> as that cycle with all these other cycles that are moving in and out of it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. where we're at now i mean right now we're doing this show we're recording this on september 15th three planets are in retrograde right now more than three my friend more than three like right? It's um, so at the moment we have Pluto, Neptune, um, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and then Chiron, which like Chiron's yeah. a dark planet. Let's include, we'll include, mm -hmm. you know, Chiron. Um, and then there's also, so Mercury is in shadow and about to station retrograde. I don't yeah. have my ephemeris right in front of me, but it's, I think it's um, September 27th is when it stations <laughs> retrograde. So it's like, it's, yeah, it's hurry up and wait <laughs> kind of energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I knew there were three. I didn't know about the other ones. And like There's I so said, I'm, I'm not the astrologer here. <laughs> no, and, you're doing great though. I mean. But the point yeah. is like you and I, we kind of hooked up here today <laughs> and it was like, the energies were both of us were just kind of like <sighs> this kind of mm -hmm. sense that we have to push a little bit, right. which, is, <laughs> which, is where this, which is where all of this is going anyway. I mean, yes. I, I think there's a lot of us right now that would just like to curl up in bed and go to sleep for about five years. Yeah. Um, and we can't. No. And so we have these cycles occurring and, and you know, the projection is that we are going to go through a period up until 2024, which includes two more eclipses, both occurring in the southern part of the United States on the 33rd parallel. It's crazy. Coming, coming <laughs> in opposite directions and intersecting, obviously, um, <clears throat> I think St. Louis, but the real nexus is where they cross in Dallas, Texas. Oh, that's a really interesting location, just considering mm -hmm. everything that's been going on there. So when you consider, and I've talked about this, the cycles, a 60 year cycle, mm -hmm. and I took it back to 1960. I advanced it forward in 20 year cycles, 60 is the Tibetan century, the Tibetan, mm -hmm. the Chalak, what is it called? The Kala Chakra is the Tibetan calendar, which measures their equivalent of a century, 60 years. Gotcha. So we basically have a century mark on the Tibetan calendar at 60 years, backed up from 1960 going forward. If you strike a line in 1963, in Dallas, the famous event of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Mm. That was the point, I have said this forever, that's when we got the New World Order. That was when they chopped one head off of the Hydra and they began their grand march towards where we are now, <laughs> starting are in 2020. There. And so 2023 is a resolution period, mm -hmm. as I see it. Yeah, I could see that. With the final crossing being 2024, which then is the final resolution. Inside of all this, we have 2022 and America 
entering its Pluto return for what two was it 246 years? Oh gosh, 246 or 247. Fast I, it's one of those. Fast yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I meant we're going to go with that. Yeah, 247 <laughs> years. Obviously, humans don't have Pluto returns except for the immortals, you immortals that are walking around out there. Know who you are? These old, old yeah, humans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and the vampires and the werewolves too. Right. But the rest of us don't get that, but it's an interesting pattern. So you brought up 2022. Let's start there. Let's, let's talk about 2022 and what you kind of see coming because you've talked about this before and it intrigued me when you talked about it because not many people were. First off, it's 2022. So we have triplets of twos, but we have the master number 22 in all of this, which is yes. it's a real power number. Yeah, I, okay, so I want to kind of zoom out from 2022 a little sure. bit. I think you did an amazing job of that. And I might add like, or like fill in a couple of pieces in there, you know, just to kind of like, just say that the signs of Capricorn through, you know, Capricorn, Pisces and Aquarius are yeah, those are all very like transpersonal signs. And so in some essence, it is kind of, you know, I mean, there are times there have been transits in the last like several years that have been deeply, deeply personal, like 2010 to 2015. Oh my gosh, like so personal and so much like in our own, you know, zone. And now it's very much like it's collective. It feels very faded to me. Like it feels very like divine forces, like duking it out. You know, it feels, it has that kind of like being taken on a journey and you don't know exactly like where you're going, but here we go, you know? And so that kind of has it to me, like starting from like those cycles that opened and closed in 2020 and obviously starting and like ending at different points you know, all throughout what we know of history, I think mm. that um, that it's kind of building up to this very, like, almost like, it's like a cosmic, but it's also kind of like a sinister, it's like a sinister, like, weird ending. It, it is, it is. That, it's... You know, and it's like, it's like, there's a lot going on with this to tease apart. Um, but I will say, you know, that in 2020, those cycles that opened and closed like the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn like that you were discussing the January 12th you know with a whole conference too of Capricorn it wasn't just Saturn and Pluto it was also it was an eclipse and it was um there was like Mercury and there was just yeah. the south node there was a bunch of different other placements in Capricorn and that just like really like opens the door for I don't know, like secret, like backroom deals, shaking hands, money being moved around in a really weird way. And also I kind of thought that like, I had this thought and I was not even like, you know, at the place of awareness that I am now, but I had this thought of like the Western world, hmm, what's going to happen with that? You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with everything lighting up like that, it was almost like a galactic sunset strip. You're like, driving and all these things are flashing around you and you're going i don't know where i'm going how do i get there what to, where do i turn next what is and, and it's like mm -hmm. you get hypnotized by the effects of everything that's bouncing off of you right and you're, you're feeling all these energies mm -hmm. and i think this is like duality on steroids oh yeah and that's also that is very much like represented in a lot of different places right so then last year like or yeah last year because mm -hmm, time is falling apart too that's the of other course thing it about is. this like yes. talk about like a dueling singularities like you know there's like the one singularity and then there's the other which is like time falling apart like it really feels to me like that is happening i've never had such a hard time keeping up with dates and like yeah, and yeah. times and things like that because I'm just like mm -hmm, you know is it I think time is kind of beginning to fray like a little bit just, time is so over it's so and I, and over been, it's, it's, that's it's, it it's like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland I'm late I'm late for very important and he's look you know and this is Wonderland this is yeah. that energy 
Oh, and, yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. I have a weird relationship with time anyway. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of a temporal traveler. <clears throat> and I've experienced bifurcation of times before in like real time events where like a room would divide in half and time on this side of the room is like slow and the other side is like whoop, whoop, and it's just, just taking off <laughs> and it's warping it's warping out mm -hmm. i can't imagine that that will get any easier no, or it's like, not going to get no. better or like you know that to me feels like that's if if there is like you know a, to adopt like the neuro linguistic programming like that is really truly the new normal that is like the only new normal is no time like it's but um but yeah so then in looking at like the saturn jupiter conjunction which i don't know like i come from some new agey-ish kind of circles and i've really like had to do a lot of like like unpeeling from mm -hmm. that and recognizing yeah. like the inherent distortions and in some of that and i was just kind of watching people like saying that on this date there's going to be an event and it's going to give us superpowers yeah. and yeah. we're not going to have to do anything like it just do you know yeah. and that's part of almost any type of spiritual programming like sure. I, I came from pretty fundamentalist christian background mm -hmm. and deprogramming from that but then dipping sideways into it <clears throat> with a background in my family that includes fundamentalism high freemasonry oh, and my wow. mother who was a psychic intuitive um completely didn't understand her own powers but was incredibly intuitive Imagine. And was really into astrology too. Oh, cool. And <clears throat> so there's that whole meld of things that you have to deprogram from. Every <laughs> step along the way, it's like a discard program. It's like, oh, I guess we can toss this out now. Mm -hmm. And there's a big plunk as you pitch it off the bridge <laughs> and it lands on the troll. And <laughs> you're you're in a constant process of threading through extremities of belief systems. Yeah. And so you get to the place where all that you have left is the tools and the discernment that you've gotten from all of this that give you the ability to start to find your own framework, which is kind mm -hmm. of what you've gone through. Yeah, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, because you have to now. Yeah, that's all there is. I mean, there is no time. So no, no, it's all. Yeah. And I think that that really contributed to some of the like memory recall that I had last year that really was yeah. just like, whoa, and, and, and learning too through that process, like, what tends to happen, like at the end of the age, um, really helps me to kind of understand and like have context for like, what could be coming as like the end of the age, like, you know, so I think that 2022, like, will really begin to see like some more of that just which I mean just based on my memory seems to be like totalitarianishism you know like in a greater extension mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of, of that which kind of ties into the Pluto return that we'll talk about um and you know a, a wake-up call coming I think for you know America. I, America. I don't know. It has a lot of, there's a lot of, it's not exactly clear, like to me, which way it will go. I think like, I'm maybe not a, as objective as I would like to be looking at it, but, um, anyway, and then well, let me just say this. The reason mm -hmm. why it's not clear is because it's mm -hmm. not resolved yet. It's also super cloaked energetically. Yeah. Like it feels yeah. very cloaked. Like there's a cloaked. lot of like, it's, I can't even get a read on it. Um, you know, even looking at the charts, I mean, I can, it doesn't look, you know, and we'll get into that, but I think that in 2022, we start to really like see, you know, whether you want to call it like the end of days, I mean, or like the end of time, which is my, favorite thing ever personally i'm just like woo, you know i'm a pisces moon i'm like okay like let's just like i'll just fall back into the void like it's fine you know but but 
I think that um, a lot of like earth changes, like seismic sort of like, or just weird like weather events like earthquakes and I, there's a lot of stuff like that I can see and I'm not exactly like, I don't think I feel comfortable putting dates like super like strict dates no. with certain things. Um, but there's a lot of like that end of the age stuff coming up for, I think, 2022. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and just how that, how it looks to me and some of the dynamics that will be interesting to parse apart. So let's parse it. Let's parse it. Okay. Let's parse it. We so, enter, we enter into this whole thing. Um, and again, you know, these are energies. So obviously, there is, even when we talk about um, this American Pluto return, there's, there's an anticipatory energy that comes in with that. <laughs> Some people have looked at it and said it could have started as soon as 2017, 2016. Mm -hmm. So we're not, there's, there's not sharp divisions here, even in terms of when does an age start? start? When does an age end? Because right. you get up of... one morning and you go, this is the dawning of the age. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen like that. No, people, did from, people from here do not show up and start singing, let the sun shine. Oh, I want my money back. I love that shit. <laughs> but yes. Um... <laughs> now describing my childhood. <sighs> Yay. Hippie thing. The inner child comes out. Yeah. That's a, that's a fun, that's a fun musical. I actually, it was playing at this kind of like, it was like a movie theater that was adjacent to the library on my 15th birthday. And I took all of my friends to go see hair. Oh, that's great. So in a sense, it was also my childhood, <laughs> even though it's kind of like, kind of like, yeah, just mm -hmm. good stuff. I got some kind of weird feedback going on here. I don't know where that's coming from. I okay. have, there's somebody right outside of my um, okay. window that's what who, is, who is mowing their lawn. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Every day that I have something to do, somebody is like mowing their lawn or like leaf, like blowing leaves or something. It's no, that, really... Okay, because what will happen is somebody <laughs> will hear this. They'll listen on your earbuds. And they'll, they'll like write me later and they go, somebody was putting, si putting signals into the background of your files. And I'll go, nah, this is just a lawnmower. Yeah. yeah. Is it the chicken? It, it's what, it in the, the in the, you know, in the age when people listen to things in headphones and earbuds, um, sound becomes very amplified and it, it enters mm -hmm. their acoustic space inside of their skull. So anyway, it seems to have passed. Now we're good. Did I just derail the entire? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. You say it, and then it starts up again. No, but and there's yeah, a lawnmower man. It'll That's phase out. Good. Yeah, he's just doing his thing. Every day there's lawnmowers, and seems like that's. I, I live in a very like Truman Show neighborhood. Yeah. Well, this is, that's me too, and it's it's amb it's ambient background. Yeah. It's the ambient background experience. Some people have cats and dogs, and mm -hmm. um, there's, there's no guarantees that. the sounds won't go off here something you know i have people that show up to do grass cutting and things like that and we'll you hammer know? roof and drill on your windows and that's uh okay. it's ambient <laughs> ambient life we're not in a, an acoustically perfect studio we're real people mm -hmm. doing real work in real time for what that's oh. worth so yeah. it's the 2022 thing is i since mm -hmm. i did derail this <laughs> Up the, pick up the threads again because this Sorry. is like no this is like nah, this is real conversation that's what i like i like the energy of it um Good energy the <laughs> as, as you've said and i can back this up a little bit mm -hmm. there's not definitive when we start date setting when we go when this date this thing will happen or that thing will happen that's a trap yeah and it's a trap that discredits. I saw this in Christianity. I don't know how many times dates were predicted for the world to end of the apocalypse Rapture. for the Antichrist to show up. Um, and you're like, after a while, you're just going, 
it doesn't work like this. I mean, right. first off, you know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Life is not that precise. No. We're, we're, we're sifting through time bands and they overlap and they oscillate. And there's also this other little thing that happens. It's called human consciousness. <laughs> because we're interacting with all of this <laughs> on, a, on a very high level. Most people aren't aware of how much influencing is going on with their own energetics. Mm -hmm. I mean, truthfully, the oh. mass public has no idea how much of what goes on around them or what happens to them as a result. It isn't some script. It is simply the working of the unconscious. You know, and, and Jung and Freud both jousted this back and forth. Mm -hmm. about what goes on in the unconscious <laughs> and how we interact with the dark materials of the unconscious. So we can't set definite dates and times. We're looking at this on a very wide scale. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, like, okay, to kind of like, I know that you like dip your toe into the Bible every now and again. And I think that I you're yeah just niche just likes to get me to do that yeah i like that i like when you do that but so like looking at that and like you know the authors of that were probably like operating on a very different like time scale mm -hmm. like we are so in this like instant gratification central culture of like and people are like just from my observations as someone who can see energy and like someone who has worked with a lot of different people who people are fractured like really 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 fractured and so i think that like there's this kind of like impulse to people not even just americans i think this is like a global thing at this point like um this like i feel bad make it go away do something like you know or like i feel bad make it go away take something you know, whether it's like illicit substances or like a pill or like, you know, call your Tinder date. And like, I mean, I'm a millennial, so that's my generation. Like, is mm -hmm. that sort of like very, very, very like instant gratification. Like, and I think that that in a way is going mm -hmm. to that mentality and the way that Medea, the goddess of illusion, like the news media, like the way that that has like incepted and pervaded the minds of like my generation <laughs> and like what's been happening this year, like with the, um, mm. yeah, the, the events, the events yeah, of the, the year, events of the year I, since 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that skip. that is, we're going to see more like the implications of that in, in 2022, some mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. physical um, implications of what has been happening, I think. Um, and yeah, I think I don't get so, a good feeling about that. I'm sorry. I know that. Yeah, and again, again, this is an operation on the conscious level. Yeah. I mean, what we're going through is a program. It's a huge, it's a huge spell. Like, and, and everybody in our community, which, you know, I bracket that a little bit, <laughs> sort of understands this. Mm -hmm. you know, most of us recognized it early, what yeah. exactly was occurring. The general public and the people that you deal with in Matrix land don't know this, but they're responding to it in much the same way that people respond to or in the early stages of PTSD. Right. We're already seeing it. Oh, the latent my. anxiety, the sort of creep on the affect <laughs> as we go through paranoia, we go through delusion, we go through dissociation mm -hmm. and I watch people I watch people spin through all of these they don't know they're doing it because no. when you're in it you don't know you're doing it right so it's kind of this thing where people are losing it mm -hmm. and 
That's, that's true. So the perceptual basis of that is that that all folds into the unconscious, which then is winding <laughs> through this temporal astrological maze. maze. Yes. Which means predictively, you're playing a pretty dicey game of cards. And yet there's some certitude because there are strong forces and there are weak forces. And I think your gift is to kind of look at the strong forces and pilot from those. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I do think that it's interesting kind of going back to the December 21st, like Jupiter Saturn conjunction and some of the other things astrologically that have been going on, like leading us up to 2022. I can't like, for whatever reason, I have to talk about the North node and I have to talk about like um, the Saturn Jupiter conjunction yeah. because that's like, that's like the, I guess the changing of the guard or something like that. We have this new leadership. I think that people maybe don't want to recognize what it actually is. Like it's the TV. Like, I don't know. That's like this new, like it's, it's artificial intelligence and the TV. And that's literally like our leadership. I don't think that any of it is like, I mean, maybe look, obviously the impacts of the leadership change, the, the impacts are real, you know, like it's like false flags affecting real people and like real people losing their livelihoods at the behest of the, you know, that's TV. an interesting point. And, and, the, and it's like, this is an effect that I call flat screening because we really don't like, I know people who've been in a stadium with Donald Trump. So in one level, they experienced <laughs> Donald Trump about that high, this mm -hmm. far away. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, most people experience Donald Trump or Joe Biden or mm -hmm. any of the other cast of characters on the stage as digital images, right. flat screen images. Mm -hmm. I don't know them. Everything's, don't know them. everything's been digitized. Mm -hmm. And in a digital environment, everything can be altered, everything can be changed, pixels can be altered, mm -hmm. you know, everything can be changed. We have the ability to drop in AI and reprogram what you think you saw on right. the fly, something they wish they would have had, you know, 20 years ago at 9-11, but still, they worked with what they had then. They had... You know, they sure did. It's tech, but they did a hell of a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't know. And that's actually the last time that the North Node uh, was where it is now, um, was around the time of 9-11. When the North Node moves into Gemini, it seems like we have like this like energy of just massive, like mind-twisting, false flag, fake fucking oh sorry fake oh, sorry. you know just um yeah fakery and i think that that is also like an astrological marker for some of the like bifurcation yeah stuff you know i mean there's like gemini is like the white and the black like checkerboard or like you know it's the, the like it is the duality Perfect. and the duopoly and like all yeah. of that shit like yeah and I think that there's like this really evolved like sweet spot that you can find with the North Node in Gemini. That's like the mystical center. It's like this, it's like the like different, I mean, this is not like in medical astrology anywhere, but I just kind of saw it as like this, um, it's like the space where like between the brain hemispheres, it's like, there's like a sweet spot that you can really get to where you're just kind of at the center of yourself. And it doesn't that's, really that's interesting. I like matter. That. Like, yeah. and I think from that vantage point, you can really look at this with a lot, like through the eyes of nuance, like, cause there's a lot of different people that are having a lot of different experiences. And <clears throat> I think that the powers that be would love it if we just splintered like really cleanly and neatly into like two different sides which in some instances like is happening for sure i mean i think that the uh i don't know what to call it like the the 
Mm. During the new age. Um, I'm talking about the, uh, the, that's the oh, divider. The, okay. Yeah. The thing. Yeah. The thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing. Arr, censorship. Arr. Yeah. Um, but the thing is to me, I think like a big divider, like, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, the North node went into Gemini in May of 20, 2020. And that was when like the backdrop, like kind of significantly shifted and more people started to kind of be like oh fuck like we have been played and we are going to get played 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 you know like and that's like when you began to see like the riots <laughs> and burning cities and, yes. and yeah, yeah heads stomped on that and conversation the racial conversation that's a big yeah. divider too in an interesting way i can see a lot of I don't know I have a tricky but I don't fall clean I don't I piss everybody off because I don't fall cleanly and neatly. oh you're like me yeah I'm not like that too uh, but yeah. you know I I do think that like on the one manufactured side of that conversation like there's people that are white that are saying like no there's no such thing as this you know and that's a little bit like dismissive and invalidating yeah. for me yeah. to witness. I don't like that. That doesn't, you know, but then there's also this side that's like, no, it's this. And it's like, this is, has like the organization specifically has like a huge shadow behind it. And of course, like some of that's been- exposed. But the organizations have always had shadows behind them. And when you're dealing with this, mm -hmm. it isn't all that much different than the marches in the 1960s, right. which people do not want to admit also, mm -hmm. were funded and endorsed and sponsored for all the good that they did. It's beautiful to hear Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream speech. Right. Could you appreciate the fact that on one level, despite my complete hatred of the term civil rights, because it's a special mm -hmm. type of rights, um, yeah. at, least, at least it served the purpose to get a few people out yeah. of a place they were in and to change consciousness, which is the important part. It's not yeah. that much different than social justice warriors <laughs> who've also, or, you know, any movement mm -hmm. which is trying to break down the barriers between people. It doesn't matter what it is, race, gender, sexuality, politics, I don't care right. what it is. You know, our society has sifted and sorted us for so long. Yeah, and use that as a pretext to then turn around and weaponize minority people against their perceived oppressors, most of which are profiled racially and socioeconomically. Yeah, we can't do that. Well, yeah, I mean, a conversation that I've been listening in on and privy to is just this sort of like, and from my generation too. So that's, this is good. I think there's like this energy of like, we're wisening up to your ways, aim higher, like, you know, perhaps rather than like pointing the finger laterally, you can like point your finger at the world economic forum, or you can point your finger at like the CIA and like, or, you know, there's these types of conversations that I'm listening in on that I'm happy to, um, happy to be hearing, but um yeah, yeah, because people you know, are of, getting a little wise anyway to yeah i <laughs> i think there's hope for my generation yet <laughs> i think so yeah there is yeah some of us anyway but yeah so i um so i'm noticing yeah the the division really kicked up like several other notches i think there was um some gemini transit in the 1960s um, there was the North Node in Gemini on 9-11, which if you think about like the two towers and now like they're talking about building like this one tower, right? Or like that's a thing yeah, I've seen yeah. in the like lexicon of the internet. So I'm just like, okay, that's interesting. And I think, yeah, I just think that there's a lot of just separation and i personally think that that could continue with neptune moving into pisces i don't necessarily 
Though that transit goes away on January 1st of 2022, the North Node in Gemini will move into um, Taurus and then the South Node will move into Scorpio. So we'll be in like a more like, that's very fixed. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this like energy of like, okay, you know, we're going through a sorting, 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 sorting process. And there's a point where like, it kind of like solidifies, um, and not really. I mean, I don't think it's ever like really, but I think that looks like some kind of. Okay. So ugh, that's interesting. Sorting, sorting process that feels, let's see here again. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've said this for a long time. We give meaning to things. Our interpretations of things are kind of a grid that we navigate by. Mm -hmm. And it has the logical, the emotional, the psychosis that crawls up in the midst of all this. But it's a navigation system that allows us to reckon things that start out as shadows and then perhaps get a little more clarity to them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I think that like the, the first part of the year, you know, the North node in Gemini and the South node in Sagittarius always comes with questions of ideology, belief, thought, like think for yourself, like that, that, that's like a big, like, you know, kind of slogan in the collective consciousness at the moment mm -hmm. is sort of like, are you going to, and really this was the lesson of all of the Capricorn cycles and like, you know, the time leading up to that, like in the last few years is, are you your own authority or are you going to need daddies to like, basically like tell you what the fuck like you need to do for yeah. you. And yeah. I think it's clear that like, that's a huge divider too. I don't want to live in a nanny state. Get out of here, you know, but some people seem to like really want like big brother to wipe their butt. Like they really, really do. I think that those people are in, but, but I think at the ball. same time, What's interesting watching this from a sociological standpoint is how mm -hmm. those people have sort of brought out in the background another people group of people that probably didn't speak up before that were like, they're like, now because the stakes are so high. Right. And because people recognize that this isn't about just mm or mm over here or what's going on between here and now, but this is like, Wait a minute. This is existential on some level. <laughs> this is like, no, no, if they can do that, then they can do this. No, I'm not good with that. Right. And it has the same effect as what 9 11 did. Mm -hmm. Oh, 9 11 wound up being the 9 11 truth movement wound up being a polarized shit show. I know because I was there. I was I was present at its birth and I was present during the time that it raged was like from 2001 through I was on radio. Oh, wow. So That's amazing. I watched the 9-11 truth movement burgeon through the early 2000s and then flame out, divide people arguing over methods of demolition planes, no planes, what did we, right. and it, it, it just scattered. Mm -hmm. But what it did was it raised up a group of people whose commonality was, wait a minute, I'm not good with this. I'm not buying this bullshit anymore. Mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, the tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist thing has to be trotted out again. And even hey, the, I mean, that's like a the, Faraday cage for your brain. <laughs> Even the truther movement gets tar babied and all this until yes. you like, you know, you're just pigeonholed into something instead of saying this is a human being that's asking critical questions. And this is what's happening now yeah. because Karen exists. Somebody else is going to rise up as the anti Karen and that creates a polarity, but it also is a counterbalance. I mean, this is, this is, the human dynamic in motion here. Absolutely. So, you know, it raises awareness. The net result is if you put it on a graph and you graphed it, at some point there's this like uptick. And 
we start to see it mount. If that's a good thing. Then we have so, to. Talk. Yeah, I think that that also has to be tempered with the unfortunate reality. And I'm going to speak a little bit frankly that there are some people that are, from my perspective, abandoning their humanity and kind mm -hmm. of going more towards like a machine like existence. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that like, there's like the consciousness of humanity, as long as I have any awareness of it, and even through resets and end of ages and whatever, though, this feels so unique and interesting and special, this is what we're going through, you know, but, um, but I think that, um, human consciousness is always very like unpredictable it's emotional it's spontaneous and i also think that we have forgotten how to be emotional and unpredictable <laughs> or like you know like it's there's an interesting relationship i think between us and our humanity that like is kind of like i mean yeah it's it's interesting i mean they've really done a fantastic job at like you know kind of pitting human beings against each other and making like us kind of want to stay apart from one another and i you know, yeah okay yeah. and so but i think that um so kind of coming into 2022 the nodes change so the nodes are going to move through like um Taurus and Scorpio, which is a very different kind of vibe. I have a couple of ish projections. I mean, obviously, like Taurus is an earth sign. And so we could see like that's I mean, big earth changes like I don't if there's going to ever be like a big like, you know, I mean, I hope not like and also I know that there are some things that are kind of like inevitable or like you know, especially with like what's going on with the magnetic fields around the earth. And mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of stuff like that. That's just like, you know, if you have any common sense in your reading patterns, like you can kind of see like earth changes. Okay. You know, so that's a thing. I think also the climate change, like that whole thing, I think is gonna, I think at some point they have to well, change the channel. There's a clue. There's Corona a stuff. <laughs> There's, and, there's truths in all of that. Yeah. And, and I've had this conversation with, and I had it on Twitter the other day with somebody. Mm. And, and I said, from my perspective, you know, we're talking about, you know, CMEs. We're talking about shifts in the magnetic grids. Will the world flip over upside down? No. Yeah, I don't. That's but not... the magnetic grids have been in flux. Yes. throughout this whole period mm -hmm. of the operation y'all know what we mean and mm -hmm. when you watch human resonance it's very clear that's mapping to the human energetic as well because we're, we're integral to the earth yes until I we get to... the human resonance don't you feel yeah, yeah. it oh absolutely oh my gosh like yeah yeah and, <laughs> and see most humans have been most humans have been separated from the earth in a meaningful way. Yeah. I mean, there's those among us that, you know, obviously are, are, are very in, in touch with it. Mm -hmm. But I, I have seen how people have become so divorced from their contact with the earth as the mother. And, and living, there's no other. Breathing, yeah. And breathing. viewing it as a living being and viewing it as a symbiosis with ourselves that we can't exist without it right it supports us yeah we are we are symbiotic with the earth and so yeah. the shifts and changes themselves could be good or bad right and i think that with some of the like I would say that what I'm feeling more for next year, to be honest, is more like earthquakes and floods, like, and, um, and more like, I wouldn't say that next year feels like the real earth changes. Like, if you know what I mean, like, I think at some point she's going to shake her back. And mm -hmm. I don't think that this is that I think this is more like, 
uh, geoengineering or like more like weather, like just pushing it in a certain direction to make it look like something is wrong. It's like kind of, I mean, within, within that conversation, I don't know. I mean, in some instances I can see that like, okay, my plans didn't do as well in 2021. And then in 2020, like, you know, for whatever reason, it could be because of like, you know, like, could be because of any number of different things, but I think kind of experienced that here as well. We had yeah, gardening, you, gardening experiences here. Yeah, just kind of some yeah. interesting, like mainly hmm. because well, the we weren't we weren't getting solar at the level uh, here on the East Coast where we both live, and especially you because you're a little further southern. We had storms and rains constantly. I mean, I live in oh, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. It's... It is so green here right now that you just, <laughs> it hurts. It's Aww. painfully green here. It's I love beautiful. that. But the ground yeah. is saturated with water constantly. Right. Yeah. I mean, here, like, there are, like, a lot of sunspots on plants. And they also, the trees look yeah. to be infected with nanites. Um, and... Also, so too, because we are hers and she is ours, we too are also infected with nanites. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and our bird, our bird <laughs> kingdom has been affected by this massively. Yes. Like I live uh, in, a, in the river valley of the Susquehanna River. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed the bird population is just, it's almost collapsed. It's heartbreaking because oh, we yeah, love our there's... birds. Yeah. There's and some the interesting on the river and all the beautiful songbirds. And I mean, just I'm emotional about this because I'm a nerd. I'm a Taurus. I'm an earth sign. I'm completely mm. connected to this. Mm. So we kind of, you know, we're seeing the beginnings of these things. And I, yeah. I, I some of it is natural and some of it is obviously engineering. Yes. Engineering and I operations. think. And I think that next year, it's like, I mean, it kind of seems like it's like all cute, like culminating, like yeah. that, that piece of it specifically. And because I can't do like horoscopes now, apparently without looking at like multiple different signs and different angles and, you know, I think that this brings up a, an interesting point, which is that the earth favors those who actually favor her, you know? Yes. And that I think that there, like I said at the beginning, it's a great time to be really, truly aligned because I also think that there's really, really magical transits like in, um, in April, there's a Neptune and Jupiter conjunction in Pisces. So Neptune went into Pisces, I think in 2011 and has moved into kind of like this conjunction with Chiron like 2014 2015 in Pisces mm -hmm. and that can get into a lot of different offshoots there's a really strong like victimization like uh, like uplifting and like you know holding up like the victim consciousness mm -hmm. and like really like needing someone to blame and like woes me's and just this this kind of energy that really helped to like lay down the foundation for the operation or the spell or whatever we're calling it like last year and so yeah. i think that it's going to depend like where your awareness is at where what kind of experience you have this is one of those moments where everyone experiences it very differently based on like i don't even think that like it's as simple as like some people are going to be in 5D and we're going to go to 5D and experience no. this 5D life, you know, like, but it's, yeah. but it seems, but it, but it does like have the, everybody's going to experience it differently and everybody's going to have their own. It's like, a, I mean, Jupiter expands things and it brings, you know, it brings good energy, but it also expands things like Venus will be right in there too. Like this is like mm -hmm. April 12th. Yeah that's also like for me that screams flooding like because you know pisces is a water sign that's like you know there's everybody has had the dream i think of the big flood you know and i'm not saying that this is that but it just has that like really strong no, there's a big water energy there's a yeah and, 
to people, follow like, fire like oh, I, absolutely and the world has been burning and it's like i wow. know the gulf of mexico the, the the fire in the middle of the ocean and they're <laughs> and then and they've got tankers out there and they're squirting water and you're going it's the ocean also like couldn't I like I saw a couple of pictures of that and I was like, is this real? I don't know. I can't tell if that's you like can't tell. You can't that's tell. CGI or not. These are but like 2021 of, trust issues. <laughs> but it also kind of pointed back to that whole um um Deepwater Horizon event in the Gulf of Mexico, which was sort of the famous black goose spillage that happened that was another bellwether as well. You know, I mean, I've now been tracking this stuff for so long that I have all these things in my head. That's and great. The, and the Deepwater Horizon is like one of those events. And I was doing, I was doing Bible prophecy shows at the time, mm. like really deep alternative stuff, like Nostradamus meets um, this. And Deepwater Horizon for me was like one of those events, and they went. Oh, this is not good at all. This is really not good. And it was like a very quickening event. It was like, yeah, we're in some we're in some dark times here. This is this is nefarious. Because there's all kinds of codes and symbols and sigils and corporations and heraldic organizations and royalty and bankers and all the usual fuckers that are out there <laughs> in the operations. Yes, these you know? fuckers. <laughs> I store all this stuff and I and I look for him. But then on the other side, what you just did in reframing was pointing out there's good energies, there's nodes, there's conjunctions, there's degrees where we can click through these things and we can work with some of these energies. Oh and my then, gosh. The amount of magic that that like, and I mean, magic for us, I like, like our I own like magic. Yes. I think there are some people who are actually participating in like a genuine, you know, spiritual evolution right now. And I think that that's the, like, that's a huge, like that comes to a huge like point. And I, I mean, what earlier this year, Jupiter went into Pisces very briefly and was in Pisces, I guess, like May to June 20th, or it was, from May to June 20th, it was direct, and then it station retrograde went back into Aquarius July 28th, and I remember feeling like this fuck, like, sense, like, after mm -hmm. July 28th, and, like, it started to really, like, you know, push forward in terms of, like, the changes to our world, and mm -hmm. so it's interesting to me, I just have to say this as, like, sort of a, like, an observation, and that if allegedly these elites use astrology, then why are they like trying to push all of this like passporting systems and stuff like that through when there's all of this energy in retrograde? Like, I know that this is like the, like, it's like, that's where like, it, we're being moved toward like digital ID, but I just can't see that like, in this climate, like, I'm like, really, guy, like, what's wrong with you, but also not criticizing, don't hurt me. But, you know, just, I don't, I don't think that's gonna I've wondered that too, Meredith, because if you think about inaugural day, the moon was void at the time that Joe Biden was sworn in as president. Yeah, the, the number of inauspicious signs around specifically this administration, it's, it's just astonishing. I mean, even I could look at this and go, this is, this is really not good. This is. No, I mean, it's the 20 year curse, like, and the yeah. Jupiter, Jupiter Saturn conjunction, like, I think it would be foolish to assume that we'll close out the year with the same alleged president mm -hmm. that we have now. Yeah, yeah. I just say alleged because yes. I think that like it's all like computer driven at this point. Like it's it not, is it, it is. Um I can't see it as like and I feel maybe we can change the algorithms. I don't know like to what extent. Like I haven't really thought that through. I don't know how much I like look upon like a lot of people and you know I, I think that there's a lot of people that are just really broken and really like their intelligence has yeah. been yeah. like kind of 
like devolving. I don't know, like how else to say it, but I just, I don't know. Like, so there's that aspect of it for me, like when I'm forecasting that, or when I'm like looking into this, I want to say like, oh yeah, like these people won't all go along with this every step of the way, but I can't, I mean, you know, it just seems like there's, I mean, it kind of gets into the whole like soulless people or whatever, but there's just some people about like, <laughs> My NPC are just people. going to defend yeah. like the institutions over like what's happening like to people but anyway kind of like circling back to what I was saying before the north node in Taurus I think that the people who favor the earth and like that the earth will favor them back I think I love that I love that and so I don't know, I mean, your listeners have all probably started their gardens, but I think this is the, like, this is like that, like, you'll want to grow your own food and not do any, like, weird, like, Scorpio is other people's money and loans and debt, and I just, that to me has kind of an interesting implication and the last time that we had like a me too scapegoating experience was mm -hmm. when um like saturn and um jupiter went through scorpio you know like it was like 2015 to 2018 there was like a lot of like well there was a lot of whistleblowing that i was not watching but there was the <laughs> at that time but there was like the me too you know movement and all of that stuff and i think like it kind of this to me rings that bell of like well they're probably going to scapegoat people who can like who they can afford to scapegoat to you know like mm -hmm. i think that that could be like a thing that we see and there's more i but more just like I just like you a chance to just like there were valid truths that came out of the Me Too movement, there will be valid truths that come out of, we'll call them the, the, the future scapegoats, the scapegoats of, of 2022. And right. every movement advances energy somewhere. We decide, or we decide on an individual basis and collectively because we influence yeah. the collective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that um, for people who have been on a journey of like processing and like integrating trauma, like and really like doing that deep work, like who have been doing that, who heard the call to do that when Saturn went into Scorpio, like, I guess to me that felt like 2015, mm -hmm. 2014, 2015 is when Saturn moved into Scorpio and then Jupiter moved through that space. I mean, there's been a lot of like, okay, like do your work, do your work, do it, do it, do it, do it. Now we see why. Cause I think even though like I wasn't necessarily particularly conspiratorially minded before 2020, it, I just had memory recall and that kind of brought me to that. But I still like, was able to after a few weeks after the mk ultra like you know fear covid egregores like right, right, yeah. <laughs> like i was okay. able to kind of like rest and like settle into like this is bullshit and like i know that it is you know so it's like there was a like you know i think that it's a barometer like who's really done the work and who's really able to keep their mind from splintering and maybe even bring their mind more back together than you know reintegration yeah yeah like uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we're um we're bouncing off of the hour here and this <laughs> will, obviously the public hour that will go out to my theoretical youtube audience who will be there once i'm off probation which will be <laughs> in a couple of days because i got whacked by the gods of no. youtube and google and alphabet because i spoke naughty things so we're being coded now. We'll not crime. Very, very careful about what we say. But let people know where they can find you, because you have a lot of platforms, and um, you know your work's important. I want people to know who you are. Tell them oh, where, I where you find that. Meredith. Well, my website is MeredithLuckyStars.net, and my. Gosh, I'm like my I like I like Instagram. My Instagram is at Meredith Lucky Stars. That's a a nice that I that's probably my most curated 
social platform that nice, I have. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, I, I appreciate you so much for and bringing me on. Channel. And links will be down in the little box below because Meredith will send them to me and we'll put them up and <laughs> you can go and find her. And maybe you'll even like mm, want to get a chart. Mm. Yeah, that could happen. Thank you for coming <laughs> on for this hour. This is the public hour. We're going to close it out. We're going to go to the other side, which is for the people over on Patreon. And we'll add a little bit more to the conversation with a little less code. This has been Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside of you. The whole thing. It's is all you. within you. Do it. Do it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> We're out of here. This is Off Planet Radio. Thank you.